think does happen. Fabio Spano on the right, Shintaro Ito on the left. A lowland Vulpix start for uh, Shintaro here. And um, again, he just wants to set up as many rallets in play as he can on turn one, start getting multiple deciduous potentially through uh, Force the Giant Plants here. Yep, we're going to see Shintaro starting off with that Ultra Ball. Going to take a quick search of his deck, see what he's got available to himself. It looks like he's eyeing up a Shaman EX. This means that he'll be able to draw a few extra cards and maybe get into those rallets that you were talking about. A lot of players we see with that opening of uh, Tapu Lele into a Bridget, and that's their way of getting into these rallets. But uh, maybe Shintaro has a different approach, or maybe he's just built his deck differently. Yeah, I mean, he might, he might just need to... Uh or he might think that he needs to build multiple evolutions on, you know, the early stages of the game, and he wants to kind of press his luck in a sense and play the Shaman and find his Pokemon that way naturally and just kind of draw as many supporters and whatnot as he can in this first turn. And uh, he doesn't want to play it safe through Bridget. Yeah, we see uh, Shintaro is playing the list that does not play the Vileplume. He, he can then play item cards in his list, like the Choice Band, and uh, maybe get himself a little more aggressive with his attacker choices. He, we saw the Drampa GX that's available to him, and he, he may have a couple surprises for us as well throughout this game. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing exactly how this deck plays out. It's, it's kind of unconventional when it comes to the North American style. But here's a Professor Sigamore getting himself a brand new hand of seven cards after getting uh, playing every card in his hand otherwise. So he, he kind of doesn't waste resources in this sense. Yeah, getting able, uh, being able to play that Forest of Giant Plants was able to help him tremendously. He's able to advance his board state by getting out that, that Dartrix and having an energy down, and those seven fresh cards really help him out here. We're going to see if he's able to potentially get off some Feather Arrows on this opening turn. Yeah, Level Ball's going to allow him to find another uh, Rowlet here, and I know that he has a Dartrix in hand, so it could be a couple of Dartrix in play at the end of his uh, first turn here. Obviously not, not exactly Decidueye, but still, close enough. Yeah, it works out. Uh, oh, over on the other side, uh, Fabio is going to be looking and he sees, ah, oh, my opponent's getting a pretty great start, but he did one thing for me, and that was play that Forest of Giant Plants. So maybe he can use that to his advantage uh, as well. Yeah, exactly. Lorantis is not exactly uh, a deck that plays the Forest of Giant Plants here. Well, I guess it does, but it doesn't play it in, in the full four that, uh, that Decidueye does, so it doesn't necessarily expect to see it early on, on the first turn. So Shintaro helping him out here can definitely help Fabio. Yeah, we are going to see uh, the Rowlet into uh, Shintaro's hand, and let's see just how far he can bring this. Starting with the Alolan Vulpix as well means that uh, potentially Beacon can help him out in the coming turns, but just to pass over to Fabio, and he's got to decide uh, how to combat everything that Shintaro was able to do on this opening turn. Very interesting. It looks like he uh, he actually had a Rowlet in hand and not a, a Dartrix. So he actually ends the turn with two Rowlets and a Dartrix in play. Very powerful nonetheless. But uh, Fabio here trying to one-up him. Will he be able to do so? Looks like he's going to start things off with an Ultra Ball. Yep, yeah, it looks like he had the Force of Giant Plants ready for himself there. And he says, oh, well, uh, you played it for me, so I can just discard it now. Thanks. Yeah, no kidding. So now Fabio, what will he be searching for? Will he be looking for the Tapu Lele or will he be perfectly happy with something like a uh, Fomantis. Well, starting one in his active spot is not where he wants to be. It means he just has one uh, available to him now for the rest of the game, uh, as for the Wonder Tag at least. So maybe playing it early is something he wants to avoid. We might see him just try to set up, and it looks like he's going to go with the Tapu Bulu. Yeah, Tapu Bulu is the choice here for his Ultra Ball. So, I mean, that does tell us that he either has a, a hand that he's going to get rid of through Sycamore or that he already has the resources he needs, like maybe a Bridget or whatnot in his hand. Yep. Down comes the Foam Mantis. He's able to get that basic Pokemon down for him so that Lorantis GX or possibly just the regular Lorantis can give him an attack boost. Looks like he's got a Sycamore and a couple of items that he's considering getting rid of. First of all, he's going to be playing that Max Elixir here. Yep. Oh, last card. No, he wasn't able to find an energy there. So big whiff, and uh, that's going to slow down Fabio a lot. Yeah, that is a big time miss. Had he hit that, he could have gotten a turn one uh, flower supply going. I mean, he still can, but a little bit harder because now he's going to have to hit it again and then also find a energy in order for him to retreat the top of Lele. Yeah. So definitely not something he wants to see there. The rest of his options, he has like Hex Maniac, but uh, definitely want to uh, use a supporter card that's going to get you some draw. And uh, he's going to choose the Sycamore. Choice Band attached to that top of uh, Bulu before he Sycamores. And now he's going to be Sycamoring away a, a one-card hand. 
in order to trade it in for a seven. That is always a trade off I'm willing to do there. <laughs> and um, obviously Fabio is too. Oh, wow. He did not find any energy cards in that entire seven card hand. Yeah, no kidding. It looks like he's going to just have to meagerly pass here as he's just not got anything going with, the, with his hand. And sure enough, he does after uh, evolving into a Lorantis GX. And now it's on Shintaro. Can he get some Decidueyes in play? I mean, the Decidui deck isn't exactly as heavy a hitter as Tapu Bulu, for example. But when your opponent has no energies, you can really put the pressure on the Tapu Bulu deck. Yeah, look at Shintaro. He's gonna, just going to start setting up his Decidui to go in. He's got a choice band on it. Uh, he has Feather Arrows available to him. And it looks like N is going to be the play here. There's not much pressure on Shintaro. When you see your opponent miss a Max Elixir and then also not have an energy for the turn, it generally means that you're not going to be getting knocked out in the coming turn. So he's got maybe got some time to just use his Feather Arrow and start using Beacon to get more Decidueyes into play. Yeah, I mean, looking at it from the bright side for, uh, for Fabio here, though, he does get uh, an end from his opponent, which is quite a bit of help, as his hand just was not cooperating whatsoever. So this, I, in terms of uh, as bad as things can get, this could be, you know, could definitely be a lot worse for him. Yeah, as, as long as you've got a supporter card, you're usually okay. Sure. And uh, looks like the answer is no to that supporter card for him. Yep. So Fabio, I mean, at least get some playable cards, get some energies, but you can see the kind of frustration as he's shuffling his hand up. Uh, I did not see any supporter cards, and I don't believe there were any in his hand. Yep. So he, he will be struggling even on the second turn of the game for himself once uh, Shintaro does pass. But in the meantime, Shintaro's still thinking about his options, mulling over which cards to discard for the Ultra Ball, decides on N and uh, Lolan Vulpix. Yeah, this does mean that he's going to find himself a Dartrix, and he has a Decidueye in hand. So he will be able to get out two Decidueyes and really start putting on some pressure with his Feather Arrows. Has he attached the double colors to the Decidueye on the bench? That was sure. the that first was turn, night, I believe, yeah. yeah. So if he has a double colors in his hand, he could go for the Nine Tails here. Yeah, that's also true. It just depends on how much pressure he believes that Fabio is bringing to him. I think he can play a slower game here and still find success. Sure. Uh... Even targeting things like Tapu Bulu on the bench, though, would definitely be powerful for him, as it would ensure that the Tapu Bulu would just not be a very powerful attacker. But I agree that I would go for the Dartrix as well, and so does he, uh, as he finds a Dartrix. So he's going to be trying to get a couple of uh, Decidueyes in play by the end of this turn. Yeah, this has been a very successful turn for Shintaro. Also important to note, Fabio left a bench base open. He had a Sudowoodo in his hands uh, last turn, but he decided not to play it. And this meant that even though he missed the supporter card, he has the Ultra Ball to potentially find himself a Shaman or a Tapu Lele to at least try to get back into this game because it looks like he did uh, lose the opening stages here to Shintaro's pretty great hand. Yeah, Shintaro Ito, our world champion, uh, is coming out of the gates very, very fast as... He's got two turn two Decidueyes here on this first game in this first round of the tournament. Yep. It looks like Shintaro is going to split the damage up and focus on Lorantis and Fomantis. Yeah, keeping Not one Fomantis still with, uh, with no damage on it, though. Yep. Not too concerned with the, uh, the Tapu Bulu. He's just going to focus on where the energies come from. That flower supply can be so damaging, and if you let that get out of control, that's when problems can happen. So Shintaro is going to make sure that those threats are dealt with first. Now he will be beaconing. Could go for something like a Dartrix and a uh, and a Decidueye. He could be finding himself the Yellow with Nine Tails at this point. He could even be going for his uh, secondary attackers at this point too. Yeah, this is uh, where you could see him potentially look for Tapu Koko. This is a card that can help him out in all the damage spread. Uh, Fabio played a lot of Pokemon down, so the fact that your damage spread would be doing potentially 100, 120 damage around the board means that you're going to start setting up really great knockouts for your Decidueye or your other tech attackers. Indeed. And he does uh, go for the Tapu Koko, which was a great call here by you, as he ends his turn with the, uh, the Beacon. And now Fabio Spano seems to have uh, got a new, a new breath of air there as he uh, has uh, a new hand of seven cards now after drawing his card for the turn. But does he have what he needs? He at least has an energy, which is definitely a positive. Yeah, it looks like he could play his entire hand out if he wants to and then use Shaman, like Shaman. setup. Yeah. But playing a Shaman down against a Decidui deck is just something you don't want to do. So he wisely spots that that's probably not the answer for him. He knows Tapu Lele is still in his deck, so he can use that to find himself a supporter and continue on with building up this board state. Yep, very clever play here by Fabio. He knows that Shaman is not a Pokemon that 
like you said, wants to be in play against uh, Decidueye, so instead he finds the top of Lele. He had the Ultra Ball in his hand anyways. And even though temp it was very tempting for him to set up for six, the more important play here was for him to <laughs> make sure he doesn't set his opponent up for six prizes. Don't give your opponent free prize cards. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's what I always say. And it uh, looks like he's finding an end here. Yeah, this is a very wise play after your opponent uses Beacon. You don't want to give them the cards that they just selected out of their deck. It generally, that means that they'd be in a good spot. So, gets to play down almost everything in his hand and then find himself six fresh cards while also disrupting. That seems pretty great. Yep, one of the uh, 100 different artworks here for N does hit the discard <laughs> pile as uh, we, both, we see both players shuffle up and draw six cards for their uh, respective prize counts. Yeah. And uh, at this point, a floatstone would be very awesome to see here for uh, for Fabio. But beyond that, I don't think he cares too much. I think his board is fairly well set up at this point, and he's just looking for that floatstone. Still hasn't hit it. Oh, he might have been a little bit punished by shuffling back in that choice band. Of course, he wanted to make sure that he wasn't playing into a field blower, but he drew right back into it. So th that extra card may have been a card to help him uh, get off this turn because he's just been stuck here with a Tapu Lele active. Yeah, and he's already attached for the turn, so that's the end of his turn here as he's forced to pass once again. And Fabio Spano just has not had the kind of start that you would expect to see out of this Lorantis deck, which is usually much, much faster. And Shintaro Ito has a third turn here without having taken any damage whatsoever. And now Fomantis taking a little bit of a beating here by the Decidueye as uh, Lorantis as well as Decidueye's Feather Arrows are starting to really uh, put a lot of pressure on, on Fabio here. Yep, uh, Shintaro is going to attach to his Decidueye and make sure that that is ready. That's 120 damage for any GX Pokemon that he uh, could have choose to attack into. And Shintaro uh, is actually playing a Hex Maniac of his own in his deck, so he gets to lock out some abilities over on Fabio's side. He's already used his abilities for the turn, so now it's time for him just to search back into his deck, find two Pokemon with Beacon, and he might just pick the same ones he did last time. Say, so you need the end again if you want to stop this. I'm going to make it happen. Sure enough, that is what he's going to find as a Dartrix and a Tapu Koko enter his hand through Beacon, and uh, that's going to signal the end of Shintaro's turn. But remember, it's not like Shintaro's doing nothing. The Feather Arrows really are starting to add up. And uh, I keep saying Fomantis, but it's actually a Lorantis on the bench. It's, it's the, the non-GX version of Lorantis, which actually adds an additional 20 damage to all of your Grass Pokemon's attacks. So it's, it's a very relevant Pokemon that once it does get knocked out, you'll, you'll definitely miss. Yeah, it's interesting to see Shintaro deciding to place damage counters on a Pokemon that isn't an EX or GX Pokemon. This means that he is going to be playing the seven prize game uh, if he chooses to knock that out as well. But maybe that 20 extra damage is something that he thinks is going to make a big impact here when the damage starts to add up with a Tapu Bulu, with a Choice Band, with extra 20 damage here and there. That can really start to make numbers happen. Finally... <laughs> Tapu Lele has enough, enough energy on it to retreat if it chooses to do so, which I'm sure it will. Um, and Fabio, on his third turn, will get to do what he would have loved to do on his first. Um, and that's going to be Flower Supply here at the end of his turn. But before he does that, he's going to be playing an Ultra Ball. Which Pokemon does he still need to find? Yeah, I don't think he needs one, honestly. Right. He might just be searching through uh, for something to discard with a Sycamore. Or maybe he's got other plans. He can use a regular supporter and just have one card thinned out of his deck to draw into something better. Seems like that's what he does choose to do as he finds a Tapu Bulu, adds it to his hand. Bench already full, so he can't play it. But now he's going to be playing a Versus Seeker. Will the Versus Seeker find? It looks like it's a Hex Maniac of his own. Yes, so if I can't use items, neither can you. <laughs> or, abilities. Uh, abilities, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, now we do see that Tapu Lele retreat and Flower Supply. Finally, <laughs> finally the attack that we've been waiting to see for the last couple of turns. And Flower Supply attaches one energy onto the Larynx GX and the other onto a Tapu Bulu. Yes. Is this going to be enough for him to really put pressure on the Decidueye deck and finally force it to do something beyond just uh, Beacon here? I think the more important part was the, the Hex Maniac. That just, it stopped 60 damage from coming down uh, on this turn. And if he can continue to chain those, maybe we'll see something big out of Fabio. A Versus Seeker finds a Professor Sycamore this time. No more Hex Maniac chain. He doesn't think that that's going to be uh, working out in his own favor here for Shintaro. So Shintaro chooses to draw himself seven new cards through his Versus Seeker. 
And um, at this point, Shantaro just wants to start powering up these Decidueyes. These Decidueyes need to have enough energy attached to them to be able to attack consistently. And, uh, I mean, you do out damage your opponent if your opponent does not Hex Maniac you over and over. Yeah, we, uh, we're going to see Shintaro's hand uh, once he draws off the Sycamore here. It's uh, going to be looking to find an energy to, to retreat and get some big damage down on the board. Uh, potentially a Floatstone and a Double Colorless opens up the top of Coco. So a few cards can help him out here in this spot, and we'll see what he ends up deciding to go with. Still thinking here is Shintaro. Yeah. Yeah, he, he might just not want to put on very much pressure and go with a beacon, actually. Uh, just as I can, I can let this Alolan Vulpix uh, hit, hit the discard pile, and by the time you get anything going, I'm, I'm already pretty set up. I'm ready to take you out. If you don't have a Hex Maniac, I can definitely make a knockout happen with all these extra Feather Arrows. And beacon does actually threaten the Alolan Ninetales, too. So that's another reason to knock out this, uh, this Vulpix. Yeah, that's very true. He's, he's definitely got to handle that now. Uh, maybe this means that a Guzma play isn't going to be available because Fabio just doesn't want to leave this Vulpix uh, to turn into such a big threat. Exactly. Um, and a Field Blower here gets rid of the Choice Band on the Decidueye. And then an N is going to shuffle both players' hands back into their deck and draw them six cards again because no player has taken a prize card here. And uh, we're almost 20 minutes into this game. Yep. Uh, this is a big turn for Shintaro. This means that Shintaro will have access to his abilities uh, in the coming turn. So now damage can really start to accumulate for him. If he's able to find himself uh, a choice band, damage can really start to, uh, to stack up, and he can start to take almost any threat that Fabio has uh, off the board. Now, Fabio did not hex Maniac this turn, which is now going to lead to uh, 60 damage worth of... Uh, feather Arrows, I think that's going to be enough to really swing the game in Shintaro's favor, unless Fabio can start getting some sort of a chain going at some point and uh, return knockout with these Tapu Bulus. That's kind of going to be what I expect to see in these next couple of turns here from these players. But Fabio, in the meantime, knocking out this uh, uh, this uh, Alolan Vulpix finally, and he does take the first prize of this game, the first prize of this, uh, this day two of action here uh, on stream, and uh, he takes a lead against Shintaro Ito, our world champion. Yeah, and very relevant, he used the Solar Blade, which means that he got to heal 30 damage. And that's going to be pretty important to make sure that this Lorantis has an extra turn on the board. It's going to be pretty difficult for Shintaro to hit the numbers that he needs to. And I, I think he's actually just going to uh, give up on any potential way of doing that. Just clear this uh, back Lorantis off of the board and remove that extra damage from uh, potentially occurring. Yeah, that's very important. Um, and uh, now Shintaro still has to decide. He does tie things up at five prizes apiece, but at this point, it's, it's not a guarantee that you'll be able to feather arrow every turn. You know your opponent plays Axe Maniac. You know your opponent still has a couple of Versus Seekers left in his deck. So uh, you definitely want to get some maximum mileage out of your feather arrow, and you don't want to feather arrow with the assumption you're going to be able to feather arrow on the following turn. That's a, that's a very big mistake that you can make, where you make a play with the assumption that you're going to be able to use a certain number of abilities, and then when you can't, your entire game plan just kind of goes Ari. Yep. We see that 90 damage is going to go down onto the Lorantis GX here. Uh, this means that with Feather Arrows, even if Fabio does uh, heal himself this turn, it'll be pretty much in knockout range. So uh, Fabio may need to start looking to secondary attackers to set up. He's already got a Tapu Bulu on his bench with a few energies, but he hasn't been able to get energies into his discard pile for maximum flower supply. It looks like Max Elixir is really just going to be the card to start adding these energies. And finally, he's going to start hitting some. Uh, we saw one earlier, but the second one is going to make a pretty good impact. Yep, he does find the, uh, the grass energy. He still wisely looks through the rest of the... Uh, the the important cards kind of wants to get a better idea of what's still remaining in his deck. And uh, now the VS Seeker, it'll be interesting to see if he chooses to go with the Hex Maniac. I think he does unless he needs a certain amount of cards. And sure enough, he does indeed. So now Shintaro, if he was counting on getting a 60 damage worth of Feather Arrows, he, he's, uh, he's in for a rude awakening. Yeah, this means that Choice Band now will not be enough to, to take a knockout here with the Decidueye. 
uh, Volorantis has put himself in a fantastic position with the healing once again. Fabio playing this very wisely. That Hex Maniac, it seems counterintuitive to a deck that uses abilities to get extra damage, but he, he knows how important it is to a matchup like this. Being able to stop now 120 damage because he used it t in two turns, uh, that's going to make a big impact on what his board state looks like. Shantara looking through his discard pile. Looking at all the potential options, or through his deck, I'm sorry. Looking at all the potential options that he might have available to him. Chooses an Espeon EX. That's another one of those secret little cards that he has in his deck that he might not use in every matchup, but in the deck, in the matchups where he does use it, it could just flat out be a game winner. Yeah, being able to... Uh, de-evolve some Pokemon can definitely be great for you. We see uh, an Acerola come into play as well. This is going to completely heal up the Decidueye. It gets to get replayed, and those energies go back into Shintaro's hand. Wow. He has the Espeon to de-evolve as well, so fantastic spot he's put himself in, clearing a lot of energy off the board as well. Some uh, miraculous shining going on here as the Lurantis becomes a Fomantis, and Fomantis does get knocked out as it only has 70 hit points and uh, that's clearly enough for it to get knocked out as Fabio was not expecting that. He doesn't give up the full two prizes that he would have through a Lorantis GX, but I guarantee you Shintaro does not mind. Yeah, I mean, what a play. He's removed all the damage from his board. He has so many great cards in his hand available to him, and Fabio can't use Hex Maniac every turn. Eventually, he's going to run out. He needs to start finding other cards to get his board state better. Just the Tapu Bulu is his attacker available, and he doesn't even want to attack with it right now. Uh, Espeon's not a threat anymore, and uh, he's going to try to find ways to counter these Decidueyes, and that seems really difficult where we're at right now. Yeah, I can't stress how important this turn really was for Shintaro. Um, Fabio knew that he only had a couple of... Uh, uh, Hex Maniacs left in him, so he wanted to make them count. He needed to make them count. That's a part of how he wins this uh, this particular game. And he felt like this was going to be the one opportunity. He, he was going to avoid choice band knockouts and all that stuff. So he, he he put all of his eggs in that basket. And then Shintaro realized that, and he decided to go with the ESP on EX plan, which just completely mitigated all of the damage that Fabio might have done. It took away one of his potential uh, Hex Maniacs for the future, and it just put Fabio in such a bad spot when it comes to the energy... Uh, energies and whatnot, and took out the Decidueye from his own, uh, the damage to Decidueye from his own play. I mean, that was just a back-breaking turn here for Shintaro, and uh, the game is clearly in Shintaro, Shintaro's favor at this point. Yep, we see Fabio, he was probably looking for uh, a choice ban so that he'd be able to take the knockout here on the Espeon EX. Instead, he finds a lot of energies and just cards he was looking for earlier in the game. Uh, we saw him take a, a pseudo Wudo with an Ultra Ball and then just throw it away, trying to get closer to taking a uh, to getting his board state where he wants it to be. Instead, he just has to uh, use nature's judgment, discarding all the energy cards, and uh, th that's just a world's difference if you were able to have a choice band instead. As a spectator here, I'm not, very, I'm not happy at all here uh, for Fabio, but I understand why he had to make that play. But if I'm not happy, I can only imagine how unhappy uh, Fabio is here, as that's, that's just not what you want to be doing. You don't want to be discarding all of your energies, leaving yourself with only one energy in play against a triple Decidueye field with no damage on it. Um, but that's the only real play that he had available to him if he didn't have a Guzma or, uh, or Lysander. And sure enough, triple Feather Arrow, 60 damage on the Lorantis GX. And now we have a Tapu Bulu that's just kind of stuck up there. And uh, it's going to be flying flipped as well as the rest of his bench as that's going to be the end of Shintaro's turn. Shintaro, once again, does not have very powerful turns. He doesn't have these turns where he just deals 200 plus damage out of nowhere. Um, but what he does have is a lot of consistent, consistent damage that just annoys you. And, I mean, it gets annoying to the point where you just, you eventually lose all six prizes, but you don't do it, you know, in the powerful way that we're used to seeing from decks like Gardevoir or, or uh, Garboder. And, um, and sometimes it's just, it, it may annoy you, but it's definitely going to get the job done. Yeah, uh, we see that Fabio, he's still 
he's in a spot where his board doesn't look very good, but when he looks over at his prize cards, he's, he feels like he's done a pretty good job and this, this game is potentially winnable, but when you just look at Shintaro's uh, board, he just has so much going for him here. And Fabio really just thinking the only way that he can stay in right now is to bring up a Decidueye, hope that he can just, just strand it and buy himself some turns, get these energy cards back onto the board, but every turn that he's doing this, feather arrows are happening and the damage starts to look pretty ugly. You see that shrug that Guzma has? Yeah. Uh, I think it's very uh, telling of like kind of what Fabio's feeling right now. He's like, all right, I'll Guzma you. Yeah. I mean, I'm not happy about it, but <laughs> I guess it's all I have available. That's definitely a very appropriate card in this situation as Fabio is forced to Guzma up a Decidueye with no energy on it, hoping that that's going to be enough to kind of stall Shintaro in a sense, even though Stalling still implies taking 60 damage wherever uh, Shintaro chooses to add it. Yeah, I mean, he's only doing 40 damage himself, so he's losing on this battle even with his best possible play here. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Shintaro, he has the energy available to him, doesn't even need to go looking for that Acerola or anything like that. He can just retreat out of this and continue to apply some fantastic pressure on, of his own and doesn't have to worry about getting knocked out. He's, he's already, the Tapu Bulu would have to find another Max Elixir, and it's just, you've seen all of Fabio's resources just get exhausted to this point. Shintaro does discard a couple of Pokemon, including a Drampa and a Shaman um, from his hand in order to draw seven cards with the Professor Sycamore. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't even necessarily think you retreat here if you're Shintaro. I think you just kind of leave it active. Uh, I don't think it's, well, maybe not. Yeah, with the, with the other Decidueye ready to attack, that's yeah. 90 damage he has available to him, along with Feather Arrows. That means he can take this uh, Lorantis GX off of the board and start to work on that last uh, GX Pokemon, get himself to those final four prize cards that he needs to clear this game off. Right, yeah. Uh, I do agree with that, actually. Well, oh, even doesn't better. even need to do that, actually. <laughs> he has the Floatstone, so I guess we'll never know if he was going to discard or not, but... In the meantime, he does make the best possible play here, which is going to be to knock out this Lorantis GX and take the prize lead now at two to four or at two to three remaining. And Shintaro Ito is one GX knockout away from taking game one in round one. Yeah, we'll see what Fabio has to combat this. It's going to be very difficult for him to continue to stay in this prize race. 240 hit points is just something that you're going to struggle against when you are the, the Tapu Bulu deck. You just don't hit those kinds of numbers uh, very consistently. If you want to do that tur two turns in a row, uh, you would have to have a lot of energies on your board. Yeah, I mean, it really just came down to, uh, to the first couple of turns of the game, the first three turns of the game where... Fabio just struggled. He struggled really hard to get any type of offense going. And, um, and Shintaro got to beacon something like four or five times uncontested. And that's just, that's going to be very difficult for any deck to overcome, especially a deck that kind of maxes out at less damage than uh, Decidueye's hit points. Yep. Well, Hex Bob, Maniac. Yeah, he gets to get that Hex Maniac down. Once again, that's 60 damage that's not available to Shintaro. It was probably going to be the way that he could end the game this turn. So that's going to be off the table here. And he wisely attacks with Tapu Lele here. It has 150 hit points remaining with no Feather Arrows here. It will not get knocked out, but it'll also be more than one Feather Arrow turn away from, um, from Shintaro being able to, uh, to knock it out as well. Yeah, uh, Shintaro has... 90 damage available to him uh, through the use of his attack. That means that he's, he would be 60 damage away. Jeez, uh, another Ace Rolla here. Yeah. He, the Seeker just paying so much dividends here for Shintaro. And because he has a double color synergy attached to the Decidueye on the bench, he could have very well attacked with it if he chose to. Yeah, it looks, looks like, like he, he's comfortable just playing this uh, a little slower, too. He, he might just use his GX attack for the, for the game here, get himself a few extra cards, and maybe those are what he uses to close out the game. Yeah, it looks like you're right. He, he could have flying flip, too, but that wouldn't have been enough, uh, enough offense, so you might as well use Hollow Hunt at this point. Yep, and wisely, Sincharo's going uh, gonna to look through and see what his opponent has used yeah. before he goes in and grabs these three cards. It looks like the big cards for him are going to be cards like VS Seeker that give him access to Acerola, and uh, maybe he needs more energy. It just depends at this point. And yeah, that double color list is something that he's going to eye up for sure. 
Three perfect cards going into Shintaro's hand from his discard pile. And now Fabio's turn comes up. He's got to not only knock out some Pokemon, he still has three prizes to go, but he also has to avoid the offense that's surely to come here from the Decidueye deck. Getting a couple of Versus Seekers kind of tells us that Shintaro's preparing for a slightly longer game, and he also wants to have some sort of backup against an end of two here. But, um, but Fabio is just back against the wall. He needs multiple things to go right for him. Will he be able to pull it off? You see the look of concern in his face as he's starting to look through uh, his discard pile and looking, looking at any option that he might have available to him. Just getting that Lorantis knocked out, the, the non-GX knocked out before he could get anything, any type of uh, real use out of its ability. All these things went wrong for him. Yeah, we see uh, he doesn't really get to have much else going for him. He has a new Lorantis, which means that he can get more energies onto the board, but his damage output has just been pretty weak to this point. Uh, the fact that Shintaro was able to put some great cards into his hand means that an N is almost has to happen. He needs to hope that he's able to put Shintaro in a spot where he just doesn't find energies for the rest of the game. If he's just stuck putting 60 damage onto the board, uh, maybe Fabio has an opening. But if there's an attack along with that, uh, if, if he's able to raise relief as well, then I, I have to think that Shintaro's got this game locked up. Yeah, and keep in mind, by the way, that we're down to sub-20 minutes remaining, and this is still game one. Uh, and this was kind of telling of how, like, this matchup can really play out. These decks don't deal too much damage, and uh, when you don't have an explosive start, then you're, not, you're just not going to be running your opponent over. So if that happens again in game two, then this very well just be a match that ends with the, the winner of game one taking the, uh, the actual win overall here. And obviously that's not something Fabio's going to want to hear. Yeah, uh, the choice band might be pretty relevant, getting some extra damage onto the board here. It may mean that uh, Tapu Bulu is able to come up and take a knockout or uh, something along those lines, but you, you can just see it on Fabio's face. He knows that uh, he's definitely in trouble if uh, Shintaro is able to pull something out of that end hand. And the worst part is that he, there was never really a spot where Fabio could just scoop, you know? Like, he was always just that much in the game where it was like, right. oh, well, there's no reason for me to scoop yet. I can still win. But he was so far, but he was definitely behind throughout this entire game. So it's not like you can really fault him for staying in this, even now. Well, especially now that there's only 17 and a half minutes remaining. Yep. Acerola, one more time. We've seen it happen time and time again. Just the offense just mitigated over and over by Shintaro. And just look at that head shake. He's... He's visibly frustrated, but at the same time, he's taking it as well as, as well as you possibly can. But you just know that that's just the worst thing you can see when you... The, the way to avoid this Ace Roller thing from happening to you, if you're Fabio, is to just get going much faster than your opponent. Once your opponent has this kind of a setup, Ace Roller is just going to destroy you. Yeah. But if you can do this before your opponent gets this setup, which is something that he hoped to do before this match began, then you avoid this kind of a situation from happening. So now that it's happening, there's just very little you can do about it. And you see how much damage Fabio's uh, player area has compared to the only 40 damage in Shintaro's, on Shintaro's Decidueye here. Yeah, Shintaro made a fantastic play. He used Feather Arrow before he Ace rolled, which meant that he got four Feather Arrows off on this turn. Uh, that means that the top uh, the top of Lele on the bench is within range of four more Feather Arrows. So all he needs to have is an Ace Arola and to not be Hex Maniac, and he can close out the game. Oh, well, he also is going to need a, a Forest of Giant Plants now yeah. that that was taken off the board. But he doesn't even need to have an attack, uh, unless, of course, Fabio decides that uh, Hex Maniac is going to get in here, which he does. <laughs> <laughs> Those Versus Seekers paying dividends for both of these players, and now... Fabio, I mean, Fabio is definitely playing it as well as you can, I think. He's, uh, he's making some solid plays in order to get himself back into this situation, but it's just a very difficult spot for him to be in. And Shintaro, just full court press here. Plays another versus seeker. That's Guzma. Guzma brings up the Tapu Lele. And that is going to be the end of game one here with 16 minutes remaining. Shintaro Ito takes game one in kind of a marathon game as uh, Shintaro going up one game to nothing against Fabio Sano, Spano. And, um, I mean, again, Shintaro plays world class, obviously being our world champion, and he just gave nothing away. Like, he, he got that kind of a setup that he hoped to get 
against Fabio's uh, Lorantis deck, which isn't exactly a heavy hitter early on, but at least it wants to start attacking early in the game, get, a, get energy uh, acceleration going. And uh, in the meantime, Shintaro saw that he wasn't under any pressure, took full advantage of that, beaconed over and over again until his opponent finally knocked out that uh, Vulpix, but by then it was too little too late, as Triple Decidua is just very difficult for any deck to overcome. Yeah, uh, we saw Shintaro was in complete control of that game. He, he was threatened, but of course, that's the way that his deck works. He has Ace Arola, he's able to pick up all that damage, and he's able to win these long, grueling matches, which is what he wants to do. When you're playing 50, uh, 50 minutes plus three, that means that if you can win games like these, these 35-minute games, you're going to be in a fantastic spot coming into game two. You don't even need to win that game, you just need to not lose it, and you're going to go out with three match points. Indeed. Now, with so little time remaining, you definitely want to see, I mean, this is obvious, but Fabio's going to want to get out of the gates running, right? He wants to just... Max Elixir, Max yeah. Elixir, Max just Elixirs, go. Max <laughs> Elixirs, yeah, definitely a force the giant plants, uh, flower supply on, you know, early in the game if possible. All these things have to go right for him. But that's just to earn himself a draw. <laughs> Yep. Let's see if he prized anything relevant over on his side there. It, it, he did start with a pseudo wudo, unfortunately for him, but looks yeah. like his prizes aren't too terrible. A single for Mantis, you'll take that. Yep. And now one Dark Tricks and a Tapu Lele with a Drampa. We're never going to see that Drampa, are we? No, we really aren't. <laughs> and uh, we are. A Tapu Lele being prized, by the way, is very relevant. Yeah, absolutely. That that can come into play. Ultra Ball here for. Uh, for Fabio to kick things off in game one. Remember, getting a pseudo Udo as your opening Pokemon is not ideal by any means. That's uh, just about the worst starting Pokemon in his entire deck. Yeah, it, it's a target for Guzma for just stalling. If he, if Shintaro just wants to place Feather Arrows, uh, it's pretty difficult to get it out of the active spot unless you have a Float Stone and you're never going to attack with it. <laughs> yep, and right away, the Ultra Ball finds himself a Tapu Lele. The Tapu Lele finds himself an end and both players get their hands shuffled into their decks, and uh, they're going to be drawing six cards apiece. Yeah. Over on Shintaro's side, uh, he was able to start his best Pokemon uh, in that Tapu Lele, or uh, Tapu Coco promo. It's got free retreat, it's got a lot of hit points, and it, it's able to just get you to wherever you need to be. As soon as you use that opening Bridget, you can either choose to be aggressive with one of your tech attackers, or you can go straight to that Vulpix and use the beacon like we saw so often. Kind of fitting that the World Championships are, that the very first round of this uh, second and main day of the World Championships features all three Tapus in uh, between both of these players' decks, between Tapu Lele, Tapu Coco, and Tapu Bulu. If only uh, we had Tapu Fini. Well, right. <laughs> I guess the, the Tapus that, uh, that are relevant to the format. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to all you water players out there. Mr. Fini. <laughs> all right, let's see. Ultra Ball discarding a Max Elixir and a Hex Maniac. What's he going to find here? Looks like he finds another Fomantis. That's perfectly fine. You definitely don't want to get your uh, Fomantis knocked out randomly. Yeah. And uh, we've seen it happen. Decks like this can be very explosive over on Shintaro's side. Uh, John Kettler has gotten many Decidueyes out when I thought maybe one or two would be max. But uh, these Pokemon could start to fall off the board pretty quickly. And now a single card hand here for Fabio as he passes the turn. Obviously, you expect to see a supporter in that single card here for oh, Fabio. Shintaro's hand is amazing. <laughs> he has just about everything you could ask for with level balls and a forest of giant plants. He's got a supporter for the turn in Sycamore. He's, he's probably going to have one of those big turns that we start to expect uh, out of the Decidueye decks here and just not skipping a beat. <laughs> I mean, the Decidueye deck is kind of built for these big turns. Um, yes, it's difficult to pull it off, but your deck is meant to run kind of like a well-oiled machine. Yeah. So if, you're, if your deck doesn't stumble early, then you should expect to see, like, say, triple Dartrix or, say, a Decidueye and a Dartrix and a Rowlet. That kind of a setup is not uncommon whatsoever for, these, uh, for this Decidueye deck. The main component, though, is that Forest of Giant Plants. Yeah. And sure enough, there, he fans it to the front of the hand. He also <laughs> agrees that it's the main component. And down it goes, Force of Giant Plants. What kind of damage can it deal now? Triple Rowlet right away, a Dartrix, and a Sycamore. That's amazing. <laughs> That's just great. It really is. <laughs> uh, we'll see if his hand continues to work this way. And it looks it like looks I like see no. a 
Couple Ultra Balls, so that means Shaman could come into play if he wants to. He could uh, use an Ultra Ball, get himself a Decidueye or a Dartrix, use another Ultra Ball, grabbing a Shaman, and he could get another six cards for himself. So if he wants to have a big turn, it's available for him. Yeah, it looks like he disagrees, though. He, he's going to be Ultra Balling one of the Ultra Balls away. Yeah, it looks like he's uh, going to go with the Al Alolan Vulpix. This is also, this plays perfectly into someone who just won a 35 minute game if you yeah. want you want to play a nice slow paced game use beacon and uh get yourself the the regular setup of 240 hit points you're not going to knock me out this time around i love how this showcases just how good alolan Bulbix is i mean alolan ninetales gx is an incredible pokemon and it may very well be playing second fiddle to its basic counterpart right alolan Bulbix is just incredible uh being able to beacon for no energy see how the Dartrix has the energy attached to it. The Tapu Koko retreated for free. And now the Alolan Vulpix becomes active and, uh, and attacks for zero energy. That's just so much of an advantage that you gain from your opponent if they don't have, like, the Guzma or the Lysander to really uh, mess with your, your setup. But if they do, then you're not going to have a... Then you're not going to be able to end your opponent's hand away. And I think Fabio is off to a very similar start uh, as he did last game he did not find a float stone off of that sycamore which is crucial for him he needed to start getting attacks off in this game earlier if he wants to start to uh, get ahead in this game and probably it, it work at least a tie out uh, nine minutes is not going to be enough for him to start putting any any work in especially when his opponent had a successful beacon uh, go off now a sycamore here i mean we already see one decidui in play and a dartrix Will we see that triple Decidueye setup one more time? Choice band. Feather arrow onto the Lorantis GX. Yeah, and uh, Shintaro once beacon. again. Yeah, just there's no pressure on him. Sudohudo is just it just amplifies each turn how how bad of a start this was when you see it stuck in the active spot. This just means that Shintaro can sit behind his. Uh, the, the wall that he's built up and make all these deciduous continue to rain onto the board. Yeah, the, uh, the Sycamore really didn't help out Shintaro very much as he was forced to just kind of beacon. But um, still, even with that, uh, with that lack of help from the Sycamore, he's in perfectly good shape with only eight minutes remaining and Fabio stuck with a pseudo Udo in the active position without any float stone in sight. Yeah, Fabio is definitely going to have to find that soon. It looks like he just found another energy, and uh, he's going to have to find it off of this N here. Uh, N is great for him. It's able to get rid of the beacon, so maybe you can stop the feather arrows from coming down if Shintaro draws into a poor hand, but we're asking a lot now, and Fabio has not been able to get any attacks off in the early stages of either game. At this point, if you have the float stone, do you just knock out the, the Vulpix? I think you have to. You really just need to start applying some pressure. And even though it doesn't do anything uh, to Shintaro's main attacker, you, you got to start doing something soon because Beacon is just going to wear you down. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess it doesn't matter because he didn't find the Bloodstone and he's forced to just pass. Oh, man, my heart breaks here for, uh, for Fabio as he just has nothing going for him. And now we see a Dartrix and a Decidueye hit the field here for Shintaro right away and an Ultra Ball discarding a Rowlet and have forced the giant plants, finding himself potentially another uh, decidua here. Yeah, and he's exactly where he wants to be. This is what you want to see off of an end of six after you were beaconed. He drew right back into everything that he needed. He's going to have triple decidua available to him. No Hex Maniac was played down, and he can start to apply some pretty strong pressure uh, over on Fabio's side. And then Fabio's going to be left with the decision of, do I N or do I Hex Maniac? I still need to find a float stone, so I need to use draw supporters. And uh, it's, it's very rough for Fabio here. <laughs> the triple feather arrow just knocks out the Fomantis. Yeah, he can just clear Pokemon right off the board. And now Beacon finding himself a Drampa and a Shaman. This has been Shintaro's classic turn. He, the moment that th it looks like the Vulpix could potentially get knocked out, he goes for the Ninetales. Not necessarily to evolve it, but just because this means Fabio has to attack into it to answer what could be the Alolan Ninetales on this turn. Guzma here going after Decidueye with, uh, with all the energies and the choice band attached to it. So now kind of taking the... Uh, 
the action to Shintaro as he's dealing 150 damage here to Shintaro's Decidueye and clearing all of the damage from his own Lurantis. Will that be enough? Well, that is the right play. It, it puts a lot of pressure on uh, the Decidueye deck. It's a great play, but I, I heard of this card called Ace Arola. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it does work. It seems like he always does this, like, just on, like, the, the absolute worst turn for him to do it because his opponent just finally has the setup he needed. Yeah, he can just put down all these Feather Arrows, Ace Arola himself back up, uh, play down the Decidueye, use Feather Arrow again, and just continue to apply pressure in any way he chooses. Rowlet, Dartrix, Decidueye, <laughs> another Feather Arrow, the fourth Feather Arrow of the turn. Poor Lurant has taken 80 damage without knowing what hit it. If I told you there was a deck that can do 80 damage before it attacks and heal 150 and have the same board state it had, would you say that that could win Worlds? <laughs> I would absolutely say that would win Worlds. That could win Worlds. Because <laughs> I think that's where we're at. And Shintaro is just showing off the strength of his deck, especially against uh, Fabio. His, the matchup may not be as great for him. Definitely the starts have not been very good for Fabio. I don't think this is how the deck is supposed to showcase, but Shintaro is just showing why he is the world champion. And now an Ultra Ball. Well, let's see. That was off the uh, the, the um, GX attack. He was just throwing some cards back oh, in. Oh, that, that makes sense. Little hollow hunt action. And uh, looks like <laughs> Fabio just has to eye up Max Elixirs onto the Tapu Lele. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's running out of targets. So just... I think he at least wisely realizes that he's running out of time as well. And uh, him using that Max Elixir right away, and instead of fanning through the entire uh, six cards here, he's, he sees that he's short on time, and he takes the first energy, shuffles the rest of his deck back in, and says, I'm not wasting any time whatsoever here. It's kind of like a second win that he just got. Yeah. And you saw that he was getting close to just kind of like going through the motions and just realized that uh, time is imperative here, and he just wants to give it his, you know, the shot that he can see if there's anything you can do about it, and uh, more power to Fabio here. As with three and a half minutes remaining, you really have to do pretty much anything you can, anything you have available to you, and hope your opponent just doesn't draw what he needs. Yeah, we see a, a, an interesting card in Fabio's deck. He plays that Pokemon Center Lady. Mainly it's for Espeon GX. You're, you're trying to avoid that confusion from making a big impact on you, but uh, it was able to help him out pretty good here. He, he avoided being knocked out on this turn by getting to bring uh, his Pokemon back down to no uh, damage on it, and uh, Shintaro's going to have to work again to see if he can get knockouts here, and he's going to do it creatively with the SB on, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like that uh, Sudo Udo is at least causing a little bit of uh, havoc for, for Shintaro, not, not allowing him to have the triple Decidueye in the field anymore, but still, double Decidueye with an SB on that just knocks out your only attacker is uh, definitely not uh, not a bad situation to be in. And now Fabio, with two and a half minutes remaining now, plays a Sycamore, has no real offense going for him, but at least Shintaro's board doesn't have triple Decidueye anymore. Yeah, that's uh, one thing that he can look forward to in this matchup is uh, he, maybe just two Feather Arrows a turn now, but Shintaro's in an amazing spot here. It'd be very difficult for him to find a way to get out, uh, to lose this one. We're closing in on the two minute warning. Will Fabio have what it takes? Will he be able to close this game out with two minutes remaining? It does not seem like it, but have Stranger Things happened? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say Stranger Things have happened, but I'm not even sure they have. I, I think the judge would have to flip the table over for us <laughs> to get out of this one. Uh, Shintaro is, uh, I mean, Fabio is over here looking at what Shintaro has uh, played so far and uh, maybe just trying to get a, a read on that Ace Arola account. That's really just been the card that has been messing with Fabio here. He can't get big one-hit knockouts, and every time that he attacks into a Decidueye, the damage just melts off the board. So uh, Shintaro looks like he can just continue to put on some pressure here, now using the Alolan Ninetales for the first time, but uh, getting 90 damage onto a Tapu Bulu is fantastic for him. That's really the only real threat that's left on that side of the board now. Ninetales was itching to get into this match the entire time, and finally it does uh, right before the match ends, as now we're closing in on one minute remaining, and uh, the Ninetales really putting some pressure on the top of Bulu on the bench. Look at this. There is zero Lurantis in play whatsoever here for, uh, for Fabio. This is kind of, you know, kind of, uh, I guess, poetic 
in, in a sense, uh, that the, the match will end just like this because he struggled to get Lorantis in to play the entire match. And sure enough, at the end of the match, it seems like we're going to end it with no Lorantis in play whatsoever. Yeah, he might be able to get himself one more. Uh, he, he's got the Forest of Giant Plants uh, available to him, but I don't think he can make very much of an impact at this stage. Well, there goes the poetry. <laughs> No more poetry in this situation as now we see the Lorantis come into play and uh, the VS Seeker finds a... Well, what's he going to find? Yeah, if he Uzma, did. maybe? No, N? There's Pokemon Center Lady if he wants to remove some of the damage off of his board. I don't think Hexmaniac has hit the board just yet, so he might have to just use the Guzma and uh, hope to keep something stuck active. Time may be called before his turn ends here. And... Uh, Okay, well, looks like time is just called right now, and Tapu Lele chooses to attack the Alola Ninetail, so now they've been given the, the notification that time got called, and it looks like turn one is going to be going to Shintaro as the turn did not end for Fabio before Shintaro drew, uh, or the, the game time ended before Shintaro drew his card, and now uh, a VS Seeker for an Ace Rola. Shintaro realizes that this game is pretty much over. There's nothing Fabio can really do at this point. He still has six prizes remaining. And with uh, Shintaro being one, up one game to nothing, uh, this match is definitely in the bag for him. But in the meantime, playing it out for his adoring fans, Tapu Koko dealing 50 damage to Tapu Lele with the help of Choice Band and flying, flipping everything else on the bench for another 20 damage. Yep, and Fabio, this is his last turn of the game. He would have to miraculously take six prize cards, which I don't think is in the cards for him, but uh, being a good sport here is going to play out the rest. This is the World Championships. You want to see what you're going to draw, see what, the, what the, your deck still has in store for you, and uh, just keep going here. Fabio also playing it out for his fans uh, as uh, he chooses to play out his final turn of this round. Surely this, uh, this round will be going in Shintaro's favor as he's now going to start this tournament off 1-0 uh, and Fabio will obviously start it off 0-1 here. But, and the handshake does happen. But both played very spectacularly. Uh, really, it's not Fabio's fault that the deck didn't really perform the way it was supposed to. There was nothing he could do. Sometimes you, just, you get stuck with a super